you're going to be hearing a lot about CU DIMMs or clock driver RAM next week with the review launch of Intel's Arrow Lake CPUs. So preempting that, I thought I'd take a second to explain what the hell that means and why you might be buying CU DIMM RAM real soon. In short, RAM is changing and generally I'd say for the better. Our RAM has functionally been the same for over two decades, maybe three actually. The double data rate modules we've been installing in our systems have functionally been the same, with DDR5 actually ushering in the first big change in quite a while with the introduction of the power management circuitry on the modules themselves. But it seems we're back at it again as DDR5 is taking another leap forward with these CU DIMMs. But what's the problem with the current standard? Why do we need these things? Well, as the speed of the memory marches onwards and upwards, it gets increasingly difficult to drive the RAM at these ever escalating speeds. When you're talking about driving a 3.2 gigahertz clock signal over the physical distance between the CPU and the RAM, that's 6400 mega transfers per second, by the way, since these are double data rate modules, you start to run into instability. Now, a lot of overclocked modules can do that sort of speed just fine. Although, you normally have to push the voltage higher to reach that sort of stability, and at a point, you just run into a wall where the built-in memory controller just can't handle pushing a high enough uh, speed even with a higher voltage. So the industry has come up with a solution. CU DIMMs or clock driver unbuffered DIMMs differ from the U DIMMs you're likely already familiar with, all thanks to this little chip on here. This is a clock redriver chip, and it basically takes the relatively weak signal from the memory controller on board the CPU and redrives it at full speed. You might have seen this sort of diagram from someone like Blinus's HDMI cable testing a while ago now, but basically a good clean clock signal is a square wave, either on or off, and instantly one or the other. Unfortunately, in the real world, well, you can't just instantly turn it on and off, and especially at ridiculously high speeds, that gets even more difficult too. So the signal gets smoothed out, especially over that distance, and then it gets difficult to know what counts as a pulse. So the clock redriver chip takes that weak signal in and cleans it up to send to the memory modules themselves, meaning the memory controller on the CPU has to work a lot less hard to achieve those ludicrously high speeds. The main benefit here is higher speeds at a lower voltage. Take Corsair's 6400 mega transfer per second regular UDIM modules, those require a whopping 1.4 volts to achieve that speed stably. Now take a look at Crucial's new uh, CU DIMM 6400 mega transfer per second modules, and those run at just 1.1 volts, and you can see just how big a difference this can be. That is huge. For the time being anyway, Crucial is only launching this kit of CU DIMMs. They're basic heat spreaderless modules, meaning the cast latency isn't exactly the tightest. This is a CL52 kit, specifically 52, 52, 52, 103, which compared to a gaming kit, is really quite slow. For comparison, that Corsair 6400 mega transfer per second kit is CL32, specifically 32, 40, 40, 84, and that's a fair bit faster, although I have no doubt that Crucial will be launching more gaming-oriented CU DIMMs soon. You might be concerned with this new standard that if you accidentally buy CU DIMM RAM for, say, your Ryzen 9800X 3D base system, that you'll be left with a bricked machine. Luckily, at least for this Crucial kit, although I'm sure all of the CU DIMM makers will do the same, this has a fallback mode. So should the board and chip not support CU DIMMs, which at least at the time of filming is everything except the new Arrow Lake chips and Z890 motherboards, this will enter a pass-through mode and will work just like a regular C, uh, a standard U DIMM. 
but obviously at reduced speeds. In theory, you could pump the voltage back up to match a regular UDIM to get it to run at its rated 6400 mega transfers per second, but still. The point is that this should at least post. Crucial wanted to make it clear that the memory selector tool that they've got on their website is there to help you pick the right RAM for your system. So if in doubt, you can check there. You just stick in your motherboard and it will tell you if this is compatible and if not, what your other options are instead. It's pretty handy. So, see you dims. They're likely the future of system memory, although the modules available at launch aren't quite what us gamers are likely to be after. You can of course get laptop versions of this with clock drivers, those are C sodiums, although the newer LP Cam 2 modules don't as of yet have a clock driver option. I'm sure at some point once the LP memory that they use hits high enough speeds to actually justify having that on board, you might see that, but anyway, that is clock driver RAM explained. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And if you want to see these things in action, check out the Arrow Lake reviews starting next Thursday. Of course, if you don't want to miss those videos, do hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Check out plenty of other videos while you're waiting on the end cards. And that's kind of it. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these sorts of videos, there's a load of links in the description, including to my own open source uh, tools, the open source response time tool and open source latency testing tool. And there's also Amazon affiliate links, overclockers links and merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this as well. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.